and welcome to our weekly dose of success God's way. If you're listening to this on the Hustle with Heart podcast, it is so good to be with you. I think this is episode 24. I don't know. I've lost count, but it is such a pleasure to be coming to you live each week to share with you this whole idea of what success looks like by God's definition and how do we pursue it and This week, I want to really talk to you about our call to influence as God-centered entrepreneurs, but I want to start by sharing with you that I had the distinct privilege to be in the room with some amazing women of Christ walking in their calling, um, authors like Lisa Turkhurst and um, coaches like Lisa Allen and other authors like Uh, Lisa Whittle, some of whom I'm going to be bringing some content from tonight, when I attended the She Speaks conference, and I want to paint a picture for you of how I came to attend that. Anybody can attend it. I mean, it's, it's open to anyone. It really is catered toward women who feel their ministry is to write or teach or speak. And the way that I came across this is earlier this year when I launched Hustle with Heart, I was looking for leadership conferences for women, and I have been drawn to Proverbs 31 Ministries for a while. I've read a lot of Lisa's books and some of the other authors that are part of Proverbs 31 Ministries. Um, If any of them are watching, I will just say, for some reason, I feel like I'm supposed to be part of Proverbs 31 Ministries. I'm sure you hear that a lot, but I don't know what God's destiny um, and plan is, but and I, I went online to Proverbs 31 Ministries and discovered that they have this conference called She Speaks. And I thought, okay, Lord, really? <laughs> really? This seriously exists? This is exactly what I've been looking for. And any of you who have followed me for any length of time know that the foundational verse of Hustle with Heart is John uh, 15, 4. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. And I, I know, because I've lived God's blessings of my obedience, that when we are abiding in him and we are fully obedient to him, even when it looks nothing like we thought it would look, that he arranges all circumstances and all opportunities. So it was clear to me that that was God aligned for my life. So that's where I spent Thursday through today and blown away by a number of things, blown away by the generosity of Lisa Turkhurst and her promise to the Lord when she started writing that if she ever got published, that she would take everything that she had learned and pay that forward to teach others. And that is exactly what this conference did. So there there was a track for writers and teachers and speakers and really the exposure to this knowledge in pursuing this ministry for me as the Hustle with Heart coach was was simply amazing and eye-opening. And I learned so much. Um, so that's where I was this weekend. I was not a speaker. I had a few people say, hey, were you a speaker at this conference? And no, 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 I was not. But I'm going to tell you in a little bit how you can watch me actually tomorrow, uh, which is July 29th. And I'll tell you about how you can do that. But tonight what I want to share with you is sort of a combination from a couple of different speakers that I listened to. And these were a couple of massive key points that just blew me away. And and in fact, in my notes, I physically wrote um, preach, (laughs) like praise Jesus, Holy Spirit, preach. Uh, So this is called The Call to Influence. So recently you may have heard me talk about that God gives us this vessel of our business as God-centered entrepreneurs to make an impact on his kingdom and that we are 
called as entrepreneurs to be a vessel, a vessel for his message, a vessel for his teaching, etc., and to serve his people, right, in ways that honor him. And you heard me talk about Moses and Moses' staff as a tool and how God used that staff in numerous ways throughout Moses' journey. And um, I, I think what struck me so much about that is how the Lord uses our, our businesses in different ways and, and in different places in our journey. Um, so you might hear a dog in the background because we are um, dog sitting for my daughter's dog and she is humongous. Anyway, um, and how the Lord uses our this vessel of our business, but also how he changes how he uses it. And that can sometimes be pretty unnerving for us, right? Because we start going in a direction and we think, well, this is where I'm supposed to go and it looks like this and it's easy to follow because I just follow the success plan or I follow the system and I'm going to get here. And then God shifts us and he shifts this vessel. And that is incredibly challenging for us, which is exactly why as God-centered entrepreneurs, we have got to be tuned into the Lord and we have got to be sitting in Sabbath with him and quiet to hear his still small voice because God does not yell. Um, and God is not a God of chaos and confusion. So we have got to be tuned into him so that as he shifts our business to use that tool in a different way, we are completely holding on and tethered to him, branch to vine, so that what he intends for us can flow through us out into the world without us limiting him. And we have a tendency to limit him, don't we? We limit him by thinking it has to be our way, by thinking we can control it. In fact, in one of the sessions I was in, um, it, it talked about really um, defining your why or your calling, if you will. And this is one of the things that they said. What you're calling is not, is it's not something that you dread, right? Um, it's not something that you can manage without Jesus, and it's not something that you can rush through. So we limit him by holding back, by becoming fearful, um, by thinking it needs to be our way, by asking him to, to bless what, what our plans are. You may have heard me talk about that earlier this week. And so the, this whole idea of, of this vessel of our business and having Jesus at the center of it is critical for us to accomplish the things that God has called us to do. So this is what I want to share with you on your call to influence. Um, one of the sessions with, with, was with a fantastic author, Lisa Whittle. I highly recommend that you go check her out. It's W-H-I-T-T-L-E. Um, she spoke on Jesus over everything. And I just want to give you a few pieces of this, and then I'll tie it together with the influence. She said, um, she quoted A.W. Tozer, T-O-Z-E-R, in case you want to look him up. And he said, as God is exalted to the right place in our lives, a thousand problems are solved all at once. And that Lisa said, Jesus deserves and desires to be first in my life, in our lives. And we often miss the correlation between the complications and the chaos in our life and the time we have not spent with him. And so we spent a lot of time praying, Lord, can you straighten this out or can you take this chaos? Can you, can you calm things? But the reason that things aren't calm is because we haven't spent that time with him. So if you're watching me on YouTube right now, you see me sort of doing this circle because it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's chicken and egg, but I would say that we think it's chicken and egg. But the point is, if we're not spending that time with him, then our life does feel like chaos. And what she said is the priority of Jesus brings order to the chaos of life. So where does he take his place in your business? And how are you putting him first in your business, even when and especially when, this is my point, it doesn't look the way you think it's supposed to. It's not moving fast enough. 
it's not growing fast enough. Um, maybe it's gone backwards. If you've heard me share my story, you know that that right there is a foundation for me that God started to peel back my business so that I would come into obedience and surrender to him. And this is what she said that stood out to me, which relates to this whole, it needs to look like this and I'm chasing that and success needs to be defined this way. And um, this is what she said. She said a number of things, but this is one where I wrote, praise Jesus, Holy Spirit speak. And she said, choose steady over hype in your daily actions. So she gave us a number of daily actions. Um, and this is the daily action of Jesus over everything. And, and this one is called choosing steady over hype. And here's why. God has not called us to keep up with the secular or the world's trends. He has called us to influence them. He has called us to influence them. She went on to say that our steady presence, what we in business would call consistency, builds trust in our in our world, in our clients, in our family, in, in those that we're serving. And it is a gift to people for us to be consistent because there's so much chaos and inconsistency in the world. And the ministry of sameness, and I'm relating this to our business, the ministry of sameness and us being set in God's ways is a calming relief to the people with whom we do business. So why did I write Praise Jesus, Holy Spirit Speak? Number one, because there's a lot of hype out there. There's a lot of people writing books and bestsellers and speaking at conferences and all this kind of stuff. But are they a flash in the pan or are they a consistent message for the Lord? And how can we be a consistent voice and a consistent vessel for the Lord in our business as we pursue success God's way? But the second thing that struck me, and this was from another speaker, and her name, I'm getting to her, just hold on, hold on. <laughs> I got so many notes, you guys. It is like crazy. Um, where is she? Here we go. Nope, that wasn't it. It was this one. Sharon Glasgow. She said, when we live a life of influence, the Lord will arrange the opportunities. When we live a life of influence, he will arrange the opportunities. Why? Because people want to go where God is working. When you're showing up in your business with the peace and the calm and the joy, knowing that you are doing God's work, people want to do business with you. They want to follow you. They want to be part of that. And to very wise mentors of mine in my wellness business, uh, Jesse Kretzer and Linda Gold said to me months ago in a call that we were having, go where God is working. Go where God is working. People want to go where God is working. And that's where we want to be because then people will follow us. When we are under his influence and we live a life of influence, he arranges the connections, he arranges the people we're supposed to serve, he arranges the opportunities because he is watching for our obedience in his call on our life. And I'm gonna make a leap here and say that this living a life of influence is abiding. It's abiding in the vine we as the branch abiding in the vine so that the vines living waters and living energy and supernatural power flows through us that we may then reflect that in the world so if all of that is true if god has called us not to conform to the world which which we know <laughs> and if god has called us to influence and he has given us these vessels of our business to influence the world. Are we showing up in a way that influences the world? And what I mean by that is, are we showing up on social media that way? Are we showing up and working with excellence in what we do every single day, even to the teensiest little detail? 
are we showing up in a way that um, that is lifting his glory and giving him the glory versus ourselves? Are we working, as Sharon said, I think it was Sharon that said, in a way that, or no, it was another speaker, in a way that makes him famous, not us? Are we showing up that way? Another amazing mentor in my life, Catherine Lutz, as she shared her story of success in the wellness business that we're both in, said, God opened the doors and I walked through them. So are we leaving room for God to open the doors so that we can obediently walk through them? And are we living a life of his influence? You hear me often talk about, I want my hindsight to be someone's foresight guided by God's insight. I want God's insight, not my eyesight. So are we, are we leaving room for his insight? Are we leaving room for him to do the work in our lives and in our businesses, or are we limiting him? And there's one other thing that relates to this that Sharon said, and she said, when we are on fire for the Lord, when we are spending this time in his word daily and, and observing Sabbath, and I don't just mean Sundays, but I mean resting in our business and observing boundaries in our business, which is a whole other topic that I'm going to talk about from the Bible study that I'm doing called Breathe by Priscilla Schreier. Um, we can't help but exude that. We can't help but talk about it. We can't help but share it. And that, that, um, that emptying and that giving of that information is so important so that we can empty our vessel and God can pour more in and he can pour more in. And someone said this the other day, Lord, if you give me your words, I will give you my voice. That might have been Lisa Turkhurst that said that. And I loved that because it was, it was like, Lord, I will talk, I will, I will spread your message, and I will be a vessel for your message. Um, my beacon in Hustle with Heart is his message of pursuing success God, God's way. And I want to share that as much as possible so he can, so I can empty myself out and he can pour more in. I'm getting very animated if you're watching me live, right? So I want to relate this to scripture. Um, and give you something to ponder before we close this out. So I'm going to take you to Matthew 10. And in Matthew 10, it talks about God, um, Jesus calling his 12 disciples and giving them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of disease. And then he sends them out. Okay. He sends them out to go and preach. And he says to preach to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So not the Gentiles, um, but the lost the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he says in, in verse 7, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, this is 8, Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. And this is what Dr. Charles Stanley says about 10.8. Freely you have received, freely give. God blesses us so that we can bless others. He does not show his goodness so that we can hoard it all to ourselves without concerns for the hurts of those around us. So we're supposed to pour that out. And guess what happens? When we pour that out, he pours more in. Let me make a leap, not necessarily theologically correct but let me make a leap and say in John 15 4 when we are abiding in the vine the life force and the nutrients of the vine extend to the branches and guess what happens when we don't limit him as a branch we are able to produce fruit but Jesus says we're not just producing some fruit we're producing much fruit so if we are receiving God's call on our life and his word and his insight and his wisdom through being in the word as a God-centered entrepreneur. And we are called to pour that out as we go, as we go on our journey. Not when we arrive, 
Not when we have that moment where we get to stand up on stage and praise the Lord and give him all glory for the journey, but as we walk the road on the journey, that he, as the vine, can pour more into us so that we can continue to give. And that is our influence, and that is our call to influence. And so I want to ask you, are you living that life of influence? You guys, this is a daily battle. What I talk to you about is what I am working through at the same darn time, right? Um, but are we living that influence or are we letting the world um, influence us? Let's just let's just pray over that this week, right? How am I showing up and living the influence that God has called me to? Not because I'm a big leader on a big stage, but how can I just do that in everyday life and serve and honor what God has given me? Whew, that's a lot that I had to share with you tonight. So there's a couple of things happening that I, I really want to share with you. This week is an online summit called the Faith and Business Summit. You've seen me share it in Success God's Way. I'll post it again tonight. And let me tell you something, guys. I am so honored and humbled to be part of that um, that pa that that expert panel, if you want to call it that. I am actually uh, my interview is tomorrow. I don't know what time, but I really encourage you. It's a free summit. I encourage you to tune in, um, and it's online all this week. At the end of the week, if you can't tune in, there will be an all access pass that you can purchase. Super reasonable price, but I would love for you to share the link that I'm going to share with anyone you know who um, who needs to be freed from this angst of how do I build a business based on faith, okay? Um, number two, get out there and subscribe to my podcast and share it with others and leave a review. Please do me a favor and leave some reviews because I have a great desire and mission to free women entrepreneurs from this angst of how do I do business in faith so that they can then savor the journey of pursuing success God's way and live that influence in the world. We are changing the face of business through Hustle with Heart. And I want people to know about that through the podcast, through my YouTube channel, and soon I'm going to be blogging on my website, all right? But get down below. Let me know how this resonated with you. Um, please get active in, in the Success God's Way community. Let us know how we can pray for you. It is my greatest desire that we will hit 100 members by July 31st, which is in four days, I think, three days. Um, not because I'm measuring that by any stretch of the imagination, but I just think it'd be really cool, right? And... Thank you for the opportunity to pour into you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for following. Um, this is just the beginning of Hustle with Heart Ministries. And I am so empowered and I feel so equipped from having been at this conference this weekend to take this forward in, in different mediums, um, through blogging, um, through, through the podcast, etc. cetera. Um, and I am just humbled that God has called me to this and that he created this ministry for me. So if there is a way that I can support you in unpacking success God's way and digging into your influence and, and your why and your call and all of that, I would love to do that. Let's have a conversation. Uh, I do have spots to coach two more people this year. Um, one starting in, uh, in August, September, and then um, one in October. But, Thank you for following. I, I really hope this touched you tonight. I really hope it made sense for you. And um, if you're listening on the podcast, for sure, for sure, subscribe so you don't miss anything. And I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow morning on Facebook for my Daily Dose Live. Have a great night. See ya.